Hey, what's up guys? It's Darkroom Duels, and today we're going to be doing the most insane Darkroom Dragon deck profile you have ever seen, I guarantee it. This deck has absolutely bonkers, being able to summon out three copies of Darkroom Dragon in a single turn, being able to summon out monsters like Evil Hero, Malicious Bane, Masked Hero Darklaw, and even Beals of the Diabolic Dragons. This deck is absolutely bonkers and is probably one of my favorite decks to actually profile and i'm really excited to show you guys this deck so without further ado guys don't forget to like comment subscribe hit the bell on your screen come part notification squad and definitely check out the patreon down in the description below because we have some awesome words you guys like getting your name description for every single video getting signed cards sent in the mail or even getting to request a deck profile just like this one every single month that you're a patron along with test hands so without further ado guys let's get straight on into this because this deck is actually crazy i've actually been working really hard on this deck for you guys so first off we're going to be playing three copies of my spirit animal, and that is three copies of Dark Arm Dragon. This card can be special summoned from your hand if you have exactly three dark monsters in your graveyard, and you can banish a dark monster in your graveyard to target one card on the field and destroy it. This card is absolutely crazy and probably one of the best cards in the entire deck, and is what the entire focus of the deck is. You can get three of them out in a single turn, which is absolutely crazy. It's not even that hard to do. We then play a single copy of Dark Greffer, which helps us get dark monsters into the graveyard and it helps out a lot with a lot of combo piece plays. Uh, we play a single copy of Armageddon Knight because you need the Armageddon Knight to get your combo pieces in the graveyard as quickly as possible. We play a small Destiny Hero engine which is two copies of Destiny Hero Malicious and a single copy of Destiny Hero Draw Hand. I don't play Fusion Destiny in this deck anymore, but basically what these cards do is you banish the copy of Malicious to Special Summon a Malicious from your deck, and then the copy of Draw Hand has a really neat effect that if this card is Special Summoned by a card effect of a hero monster, you can make each player draw a card, and then during the next standby phase after this card was sent to the graveyard, you can Special Summon this card from your graveyard but banish it when it leaves the field, and you can only use the effect of Draw Hand once per turn. It's not that bad of a card to be able to just send to the graveyard and use as a fusion material. We then play two copies of Vision Hero Vion. Vision Hero Vion is really neat in this deck too because when this card is normal or special summon you can send any hero monster from your deck to the graveyard and you can only use this effect once per turn. And then once per turn you can banish one hero monster from your graveyard to add a polymerization from your deck to your hand which is going to help us thin that deck even more to be able to get our particular combo pieces. We then play a single copy of Elemental Hero Shadow Mist. This is the card that you're usually going to send to the graveyard off your Vision Hero Viom to be able to search a hero from your deck to your hand, which is really helpful to get stuff from your deck to your hand, like a copy of Evil Hero Adusted Gold. You do play a single Adusted Gold because you can discard this card from your hand to add a Dark Fusion from your deck to your hand, and it helps you go into your copy of Malicious Bane. Malicious Bane is probably the most consistent card in this entire deck because all you have to do is open up an Armageddon Knight, normal summon the Armageddon Knight, send the Shadow Mist to Grave, search the Adusted Gold, discard the Adusted Gold, and then grab the copy of your um, Dark Calling, and then you pretty much have a Malicious Bane once you get a Dark uh, Monster that's level 5 or higher in your graveyard that you can banish, which is really easy to do. We then play a single copy of Blackwing Zaphros the Elite. It helps us control the amount of Dark Monsters in the graveyard. You can bounce a card on your side of the field back to your hand and then special summon this card from your graveyard and take 400 points of damage, but you can only use this effect once per duel. And it's just kind of cool since Black Wings are my favorite deck of all time. you got to play a Zaphros in this deck. It just works out so well. And then we play two copies of Plague Spreader for the last two monsters for the deck. The reason you play Plague Spreader in this deck is because it can help you stack cards back on the top of your deck to be able to deal with certain problematic cards and get you a dark monster on your side of the field for link summons and synchro summons into stuff like Beals and other synchro monsters in the deck, which is really, really, really nice. So that's it for the monsters, guys. Let's get into the spells. The spells have changed up quite a bit since the last build, which is really interesting. So first off, we're playing a single copy of Monster Reborn. Monster Reborn is just a really good extender to help us get into all sorts of different crazy plays in this deck and get our monsters back out of the graveyard. It also helps control the amount of dark monsters that are in the graveyard by getting them out of the graveyard back onto the field. We then play a single copy of Reinforcements of the Army, which searches just about all of our hero monsters except for a Dusted Gold, because a Dusted the gold is a fiend monster and also it can help you get your dark grapher and your copy of armageddon knight which is super nice since they're one ofs we play a single copy of polymerization which is searchable off our copy of vision hero vion which you're going to go into starving venom fusion dragon on your side of the field to stack the graveyard with more dark monsters and get out a really powerful big boss monster we then play a single copy of dark calling dark calling is searchable by a dust of gold to go into evil hero malicious bane one copy of mass change mass change you just need as one of it is searchable 
simple, it's easy to draw into it. You just need it as a one of. If you, if you played any more than one, it's going to clog because you only play one mass hero in the extra deck. So I just play it as a one of in this deck, and it helps me if I hard draw into it, then I just flip it on any hero monster and put out a copy of Dark Law. And Dark Law is the only hero, masked hero, that we play in the extra deck, so it's the only one that you're ever going to summon. One copy of Call by the Grave, because you can only play one Call by the Grave and it stops hand traps. One copy of Upstart Goblin, because Upstart Goblin just makes it a 39 card deck, which is super helpful. And one copy of Performa Pal Popper Up. Popper Up is just a good draw card. I play it as a one of, because you can only use it once per turn it helps me get cards out of my hand um, and it doesn't do stuff like what uh, card destruction would do you can change this out for card destruction but I don't particularly care for that in this deck because it stacks the graveyard too thick with dark monsters I like playing the perform pal popper up because I can discard between one and three cards from my hand um, and then draw the same number of cards but you take a thousand points of damage for every card that you drew because we don't play any perform pals odd eyes or those monsters that you're going to draw normally for this effect to avoid that effect damage we then play three copies of Allure of Darkness because it is a primarily dark deck. I mean, everything in the main deck is dark, so you're going to be drawing plenty with this card. We play three copies of Dark World Dealings. Dark World Dealings is really nice in this deck, too, because you can dig. Basically, it makes the deck even thinner because you get to draw a card and then discard a card. It's like playing three more Upstart Goblins in this particular build. We then play three copies of Golden Bamboo Sword. Golden Bamboo Sword is how the deck even works because you have to use the Bamboo Sword package to make the deck work really, really well. And it is amazing to actually play in this deck. We play a single copy of Broken Bamboo Sword. Broken Bamboo Sword is just another equip spell that we're going to be using in the deck. And you need to have a uh, Bamboo Sword on your side of the field to resolve the Golden Bamboo Sword. So it's really important that you have four different Bamboo Swords in your deck. So we use three copies of Cursed Bamboo Sword. The Cursed Bamboo Sword is really neat because you can use this card um, to be able to equip to a monster and it makes the monster's attack go to it makes it gain zero attack but that's not the reason that you use this card what you use this card for is if it's sent to the graveyard um, then you get to add one bamboo sword card from your deck to your hand except another copy of cursed bamboo sword um, and also you have really really neat ways of like getting multiples of these in the graveyard per turn because it on not once per turn if this card is sent to the graveyard you get to add a bamboo sword card from your deck to your hand except another copy of cursed bamboo sword so if I send two or three of them to the graveyard I can just add three copies of golden bamboo sword and if I have broken bamboo sword I get to draw six out of the deck so basically what you're trying to do with this deck is dig so deep in the deck that you're going to draw into your copy of Dark Arm Dragon to be able to keep digging and digging and digging and digging into the deck until you finally get your copies of Dark Arm Dragon and have your graveyard set up. It's really, really cool. So for the equip spells that we're playing, because we are playing in a Zold package, we're playing a single copy of Living Fossil. Not a bad card to actually draw into, and it helps us control the amount of dark monsters that are in the graveyard because you can target a level 4 monster in your graveyard, special summon it, and the equipped monster is banished when it leaves the field. It does lose a thousand effects, and its effects are negated, which is not that big of a deal because we're just trying to get a card out of the graveyard. We play a single copy of DDR. DDR is, again, not a bad card to draw into because if you discard a card out of your hand, it might be a plague spreader that you want to get back on your field. You get to revive a card from being banished that Dark Arm Dragon might have banished already. And it just helps overall get your consistency out of this deck. One copy of Divine Sword Phoenix Blade. Phoenix Blade is really good in this deck because it can recur itself. And it can help you control the amount of dark monsters that you have in the graveyard. Because you can banish two warriors to add this card back to your hand. So it just helps so much with controlling the amount of darks that you have in your graveyard. If you have five in your graveyard, you're stuck with three dark armed dragons in your hand. You banish two warriors off this card. And then you throw out all three dark armed dragons. And then you use this card with on Quip it onto a monster that's a warrior monster and it gains 300 attack which is pretty good and then we play a single copy of moon mirror shield moon mirror shield helps us get past problematic monsters like dragoons and stuff like that which is really nice to be able to just activate Moon Mirror Shield on a dark copy of Dark Arm Dragon and attack your opponent with the Dark Arm Dragon, and it can beat over any monster on the field because it becomes 100 attack points higher than the monster it's attacking, which is really, 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 really nice. So that's it for the main deck, guys. As you can see, basically a Zold package from here over, a, a deep draw power all the way to here, from all the way from the Bamboo Sword engine over to the Upstar Goblin, and then tech cards at the top. So that's it for the main deck guys let's get into the extra deck so for the extra deck we're going to be playing a single copy of beals i have to say i pretty much put all my favorite cards in this particular deck and it works beals is really good in the deck because it can be an out to a lot of different cards and it can't be destroyed by battle or by card effects and anytime you take battle damage or effect damage um, when you take 
damage at all uh, from an attack. This card gains attack equal to the attack life points that you lost. One copy of Borlode Savage Dragon, really easy to summon in this deck because basically you're just trying to get it out on your field as quickly as possible after you've resolved a bunch of cards to get you additional negates on your side of the field. One copy of Coral Dragon. Coral Dragon is something I wasn't playing in the deck before, but it lets you, it really helps out because you can once per turn discard a card and then target a card your opponent controls and destroy it. And if this card is Synchro Summoned, is sent to your field to the graveyard by any means. It doesn't have to be used as Synchro Material. You get to draw a card, which can be super nice to use as Link Material to dig deep deeper into the deck if you need to. Sometimes when this deck, one draw can make the difference where you're getting that extra draw to be able to dig to the next draw card and the next one and then the next one. And sometimes sometimes it doesn't matter, sometimes it does. So it just kind of depends to try and get all three out. We then play a single copy of Brionic, which helps us dump our hand and bounce stuff against our opponent. One copy of Dark Armed, the Dragon of Annihilation. Dark Armed, the Dragon of Annihilation is amazing. you got to play it at least one, because it's going to help you out a lot in the deck to be able to overlay on top of a Dark Armed Dragon if you have exactly five Darks in your graveyard, which is usually not going to happen, but being able to detach a material from this card to target a card your opponent controls and destroy it is pretty nice in case you need that one extra pop. This card is super helpful. Number 60 is the only other XZ monster I play in this deck and is super helpful just to be able to get it out on your side of the field to be able to double the attack of a monster, draw two and discard one, which is usually the effect that I'm going to use is to draw two and discard one to skip my next draw phase because it's kind of like a deep draw deck that you're getting into your copies of Dark Arm. We're playing a single copy of Evil Hero Malicious Bane. This card is ridiculously consistent in this deck and it's one of my favorite cards. Like this, Beals and Dark Arm Dragon are like my three favorite cards of all time. Um, Masked Hero Dark Law is really easy to summon in this deck too. You just have to draw into your copy of the mass change with a hero monster in your side of the field. It's not hard at all to get that out on your side of the field. One copy of Starving Venom Fusion Dragon. Starving Venom Fusion Dragon is what you summon out with polymerization. You just use two dark monsters on your side of the field, summon this big beefy beat stick out on your side of the field, and OTK your opponent. One copy of Access Code Talker, just to be able to summon out another big bo boss monster. One copy of Soryuja Skulldread. Skulldread's really easy to summon in this deck because all you really have to do with this card is have four monsters on your field with different names, which is not hard to be able to get it out to draw four and then place three back on the top of the deck. This card is a card that I don't use all that often this deck, surprisingly enough, but it's there if I ever do need it. One copy of Nightmare Unicorn just to help us spin stuff, which is super nice. Nightmare Phoenix to pop spells and traps and to dump cards out of our hand because you have to discard a card to activate its effects. And then two copies of Isolde, Two Tales of the Noble Knights, which helps us thin the deck so we don't draw into our copies of our... Um, equip spells, which is really pivotal to the deck because you don't want to start drawing into your equip spells. And also you can use Azold to send your copy of the Curse Bamboo Sword to the graveyard, one of them, to be able to grab from the deck a copy of the either the Bamboo Sword, uh, Broken Bamboo Sword, or Golden Bamboo Sword, either which one you need to start going off with your plays. So that's it for the deck, guys. I hope you did enjoy it. This deck is absolutely bonkers. It's really fun to play around with, and it's one of those decks that you can solitaire it because of how deep you just draw into this deck. It's super fun to play around with, and probably one of my favorite decks that I built that's just kind of a weird, quirky deck that I've built a long time ago and wanted to build a deck that just solely focused around summoning Dark Arm Dragon, but I figured it was time for an update of it, and I really hope you guys did enjoy it. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, you definitely should subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell on your scene, comment, bar, notification squad, and definitely, definitely check out the Patreon, because it really helps out the channel, and we'll see you guys in the next video. See you later, guys!